This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. We're in Bourbon here for the press conference for Skeet versus Eggington, 5th of March. With me, not fighting on that bill, I've got Matthew Macklin. How are you? Not too bad. Yeah? Can't complain. Looking well? I'm trying. <laughs> you, you, you don't think you're here? Because Eddie's gone course, down to that course, advanced hair studio. <laughs> have you gone to that as well? No, no. I might have to do another couple of years, though. <laughs> that's what he said. That's what he said. Um, obviously, talking to Eddie Earn, he said he keeps talking about a potential fight between you and Brian Rose. Yeah. Um, can you give us any news on that? Is that, is that a fight that's a possibility for yeah, uh, yeah, I think later uh, on? He's trying to make it, so hopefully that can get done. And uh, it, it could happen next for me. So I think it's a good fight, you know. I think it, uh, you know, if I'm being honest, I probably haven't performed well for about three years. I think you know, Al Seen was probably my last good performance, really. Um, you know, I fought Golovkin, and I've had win a couple of wins after that. But again, I don't feel like I've performed well. But I remember, I remember at several stages of my career having periods like that, and then uh, you know, then, then my best wins came. So. Um, you know, but obviously I'm older now, so you, you, that is a factor where back, you know, when, you, when it was happening before, you think, no, you, you, you're just having a, a, a rough time, or things aren't going well, or your confidence is enough, or you've had injuries or whatever. But you know, and, and I, I feel there's reasons now why I haven't performed well. Like I say, if I was look at my last four or five fights, and I, I, the ones that I did perform well, in, if you asked me, I'd say it's because of X, Y, and Z. But obviously, the critics will probably say, no, it's because you're washed up. You had a lot of hard, hard fights, you had a hard career, and, and you're done. And, and I suppose it's a possibility, isn't it? But, um, you know, I watched my, my last fight against Wildwood the other day, and I was like, you know, I was embarrassed really watching it. It was a poor performance, do you know what I mean? But, you know, when you weigh up all the other things, uh, you know, I, I know why I underperformed, and uh, I, I, well, I believe, and I know why I believe I underperformed, and I think Brian Rose is a good fight for me at the stage of my career because it'll tell me exactly what I need to know about where I am. I mean, it's all right me talking about fighting, you know, for world title fights and Danny Jacobs and whoever else has, has got the belts, but. The reality is, you know, if I can't beat Brian Rose, then I don't deserve those fights. So, you know, and I wouldn't want to go into a fight, you know, on the back of my last performance. You know, my confidence wouldn't exactly be at its, its highest, wouldn't it, going into a fight like that? So, but if I can, if I can, uh, Brian Rose is a good fighter. You know, he's a good fighter. He's fought for a world title. He's, you know, apart from, you know, Max Maxwell stopped him also. Um, uh, Carson Jones stopped him, but he avenged both defeats. So the only real loss on his record that was, you know, he was where he was a bit out of his depth was Demetrius Andrade, Andrade, Andrade yeah. who's, who's a hell of a fighter. You know, he got stripped because no one wanted to fight him, and he was world champion. So, um, you know, Brian is a good fighter. He's a solid, you know, he's a solid fighter. He's a very well schooled, technically good. He's very fit, fights at a good pace, coming off a good win. You know, he's coming off the Carson Jones, which is the biggest win in his career. He's confident to be high, and and I'm sure that he looks at me and thinks that I'm on the slide because I don't think he would have took this fight a couple of years ago where now he's probably at a stage of his career where he needs a meaningful win. He probably looks at me and thinks he's not what he was and I'd be a big scout for him. You know, from my point of view, Brian's going to tell me exactly what I need to know about myself before I take another step towards a world title. So I think it, for me it ticks a lot of boxes. It's a good fight. Uh, it's a fight that I know I have to get up for because if I don't, I will lose. Simple as that. But it's also a fight that if I am, if I, if I do get up from training as well, if no injuries and everything goes well, it's a fight I should definitely win. What's your weight situation at the moment then? Well, uh, I spoke with, when, when this fight first came up, I said to him, is it at 154 or 160? And he said, 160? And he said, uh, look, I think that's where the big fights are. And I said, well, what if a big fight came up at like middleweight, you know, or super welterweight, whatever it is now, you know, I didn't, I, I could still do that. And he said, no, no, he said, look, everyone needs to know that you can do both. You've won that, you won that super welterweight title, WBC, super welterweight international title. So you've proven you can make the weight. Uh, and really, it's wherever the the, 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 the the world title fight comes up. Really, the, wherever the big fights are, wherever the world title fights are, that's you know, I can do 150, 160. I mean, I can make 154, and I sometimes I think I should have probably been at that weight years ago. But then the other, you could also argue, well, you've had all your success at 160. Just because you could make 154 doesn't necessarily mean that's what you perform best at. So, you know, at the end of the day. Brian's not a big middleweight, he's, he's just moved up to middle. I'm the more natural middle of the two, so it doesn't really matter if it was at 154 or 170, mm. do you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, it's from, from the weight situation, wherever the big fights are, I can, I thought if the right fight came up at like middleweight, I would do it. Um, obviously, just talking about the middleweight scene, um, obviously we, we had a new champion in Billy Joe Saunders recently, uh, defeating Andy Lee. Yeah. There's always a talk of Andy Lee and, and, and yourself and... Whether that fight's still a possibility for the future, we don't know. But uh, Billy Joe Saunders getting a little bit of criticism at the moment because of this whole Golovkin thing. People seem to think that he's, um, I'm not saying avoiding him, but you know, um, 
some of the things he's said suggest that you know he's wants to be paid basically if he's going yeah. to go in with the best he wants to be paid what's your take on the whole Golovkin and Saunders he's thing absolutely right he's mm. really talking sense I mean he's never swerved anyone he's won you know British Commonwealth European world titles he's done it the, the old fashioned traditional way um, he's, he's just won his world title why should he have to go he's, not, he's under no obligation to fight uh, <laughs> Golovkin next he's not his mandatory challenger you know what he's you know, I understand that Golovkin wants to fight. He wants to unify all titles and become undisputed middleweight champion. But he just just won the title. You know, most champions through his winning title, they, they, have a, they usually have a fairly okay, you know, voluntary. They don't have the hardest. They fight their manager straight away. Um, you know, Golovkin's a tough fight for anyone. You know, uh, no one wants to fight him. You know. Uh, so I'm not saying Billy Joe doesn't want to fight him, but he'll fight him. But he wants to get paid properly when he does fight him. It's 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 because boxing's a sport, but it's also a business, and the risk reward has to stack up. Mm. Uh, Billy Joe can get a big 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 money for fighting anyone. So if he's going to take the, the most risky fight out there, then he has to be compensated accordingly. Yeah. And at the minute, the money they're talking, it's not it doesn't stack up. There's there's other fights out there where he can get paid the same, and and, and it's nowhere near as high risk. So from a, a business point of view, it. it Golovkin doesn't make sense right now. When mm. there's more money on the table and it's pay per view, and they're going to and, and they're prepared to guarantee Billy Joe more money, then then that's a different situation. Mm. It's interesting because obviously Golovkin's targets are to sort of claim all the belts. Uh, we're expecting a fight with Canelo uh, at some point this year, hopefully. But um, the Billy Joe Saunders fights there. But like you said, it's not his mandatory. Um, you know. And listen, I'm a boxing fan yeah. too, as well as being a boxer. I'm a yeah. fan, and I want to see the best fights out there. Yeah. But you know, Billy Joe being managed by MGM as well. You know, it has to make sense for him to do what's best for the for the lad and what's right for that. And mm. from a business point of view, that fight doesn't make sense yet because it's not not with the money they're talking. If they want to talk proper money, then then it can there can be a serious conversation. But at the minute, it's not there mm. for, the, for what they're. You know, the, the money that's all just doesn't add up for Billy Joe. He he he's also world champion. You know, he he beat really Andy Lee. He's you know, like I say, he's done it the whole the old way, the traditional way. Hasn't sidestepped anyone. He's won his world title, and now he's gonna, he's gonna, and he has to make as much money as he can, being world champion. So, yeah, uh, Golovkin is a big fight, but it's not the only big fight out there. There mm. are other big fights with Billy Joe, which probably make more money for him. Mm. You know, there's the Eubank Junior rematch. That's just one fight. There's, lo there's lots of big fights out there for him. Now he, he's, he's another world champion. There's Danny Jacobs. There's so many big fights out there for him. And the bottom line is, Golovkin, in my opinion, is probably the, the most risky fight. So therefore, he has to get paid the most money. Mm. And at the minute. That's not where we're at. We shall see what happens with that. Anyway, Matt, um, thanks for talking to uh, IFL TV. I think we're going to come down to your new gym in Birmingham. Yeah, have a look. Have a look, look around there um, in a little while. So uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers, Matt. Cheers.